Hello. Today we're going to go over the notes for Chapter 2. Um, my suggestion is that you look at the file, the Word file that's in the notes section. Uh, try to complete it on your own and then watch this video to um, get the correct answers and to, to check yourself to see if you've um, understood the concepts or not. Um, I will also post this PowerPoint that I'm going to go through today. Um, so if you need to look at the numbers or the um, uh, results more carefully, you have that PowerPoint and have, can take the time to do that. Okay, so debits and credits. Remember in Chapter 2, we're learning about debits and credits, T accounts, posting to uh, journal entries to the ledger, um, and then creating the trial balance. So a debit is on the blank side of the T account. So which side of the T account does a debit belong on? And that's the left side. A credit is on the blank side of a T account. It's the opposite of a debit, so it's the right side. So remember the T accounts show debits and credits, debits on the left, credits on the right. Okay. A double entry system provides that blank must equal blank. Okay, what two things need to be equal in a double entry system? And that's debits must equal credits. Okay along with the accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity, that has to be in balance in the double entry. Make sure you hit two accounts uh, in that equation to make sure that equation is in balance. And within doing that, debits equal credits. A normal balance, so if you think about accounts, the normal balance in an account is the side where what are recorded. And that's where it increases. So assets have a normal debit balance. They are increased with uh, a debit. So the normal balance and the increase are the same size. Liability, normal balance is credit. And the increases to liabilities are on the credit side. OK, here's an acronym that you can use to try to remember um, which accounts are debits. So it's, it's DEAD, D-E-A-D. Okay, stands for is that debits are expenses, assets, and dividends. Okay, so normal balances uh, with debits are expenses, assets, and dividends. The debits are in increase these accounts, assets, expenses, assets, and dividends. Okay, and if it's not dead, it's a credit. So everything else. Uh, besides these accounts, are credit balance, normal debit. Normal balance is a credit and increases with the credit. Okay, so <clears throat> we have different types of accounts here from the accounting equation, asset, liability, common stock, retained earnings, dividends, revenues, and expenses. Okay, so we need to define each of these. So I'll leave that up to you. You define it in your own words. Um, can be as simple as an asset is something you own, liability is something that you owe, uh, that type of thing. Um, or using the resources from the book in um, online, uh, you can get the, the definitions of, of what the book says it is, which you know will be more along the lines of assets are resources that a company owns to generate revenues in the future periods, or something along that those lines is what that definition is. So, but whatever words that you can remember and can um, make sure you understand what these um, accounts are would be best that you fill in there. Okay, but so assets, the increase with the debit, decrease with the credit. Okay, so whatever the increase is, the decrease is the opposite side of it. Liabilities, increases with a credit, decreases with a debit. Common stock, to stockholders equity account increases with the credit decreases with the debit retained earnings again increases with the credit decreases with the debit dividends which decreases stockholders equity okay so it's the opposite of what the normal stockholders equity accounts are it increases with the debit decreases with the credit Revenue, revenue goes to the income statement, then closes into retained earnings. It's part, it increases 
um, stockholders equity. So it increases with a credit and decreases with a debit. And then expenses, just the opposite of revenue. So that increases with the debit, decreases with the credit. Once we know what increases the types of accounts, so asset liability, common stock, et cetera, we can figure out for the specific accounts what the normal balance is. Remember, the normal balance is the side that it increases with. So at the bottom here, we have a number of accounts. We have identified what type of account it is. And once we know the type of account, we can know what the normal balance is. Start with cash. Cash is a asset account. Assets increase with the debit, so a normal balance is a debit. Accounts payable. Remember, when you think about accounts with the word payable in it, almost always is a liability. Payable is something you owe to somebody that's a liability. So account payable is a liability. Increases with the credit. Normal balance is a credit. Land, land is an asset, so you own land if you use it in your business. It's an asset, debit, supplies expense. Okay, it's an expense account, increases with a debit. Normal balance is a debit. Interest payable, that's another liability account, so that normal balance is credit. Account receivable, that's customers that owe you money. It's an asset, so it's got a debit normal balance. Dividends, it's returning earnings back to stockholders. Decreases share stockholders' equity. It's got a nor it increases with a debit. Normal balance is debit. Service revenue, again, another hint here. Anytime you see revenue in the account title, it's in a revenue account. Almost always, there's always exceptions, and we'll see one in a minute here. Um, but service revenue is where you record the revenue. You do that with the credit, normal balance is credit. And the other column, retained earnings, stockholders equity account, normal balance is credit. Prepaid insurance, okay. We haven't talked much about prepaids, but um, we will in future periods, or in future uh, chapters, the prepaid insurance is a asset account. So you pay something up front and you're gonna use it similar to supplies that we've talked a little bit about where you use supplies over a number of periods. Prepaid insurance is an asset. Normal balance is debit. Unearned revenue, okay. So this is the account, it's got revenue in it, but it's not a revenue account and it doesn't have the word payable, but it is a liability account. So this is one of those the, the weird accounts or strange accounts that doesn't always follow the rules um, that we've talked about. And we'll learn as we go through this um, semester that there's a lot of exceptions in accounting. So I'll, a lot of times I say except for, um, and this is one of them. So under and revenue is where customers pay you in advance you haven't performed a service or provided goods yet, so it's unearned revenue. You have the cash, but you haven't performed the, the service, so you can't record the revenue. And we'll learn more about that in another chapter. Okay, it's a liability, and just like other liabilities, it's got a normal credit balance. Okay, salaries expense, one of those expense accounts, debit normal balance and increases with a debit. Notes payable. Payable is a liability. Credit is the normal balance. Supplies, these are items you use in your business. So supplies is an asset. It's a debit balance, debit uh, increases. Common stock, credit balance normally increases with the credit. And rent expense, expense account increases with a debit. And it's got a, a debit normal balance. So next we'll look at journal entries. Okay, journal entries is how you record transactions in accounting. Uh, in chapter one, we looked at the tabular form. That's just a way of identifying 
you know, where it kind of goes. The journal entries is really how you record it um, in the accounting. Okay, so in this example, we're going to analyze the following transactions for Hawk Corp. These relate to the first month of business beginning January 1st, 2020. Okay, so we're going to look at each one of these. I think there's 10, um, and we'll de determine what the um, journal entry is for these. So the first one, invested $10,000 in exchange for common stock. Okay, so investors gave the company $10,000. They now own part of the com company, and they see that as common stock on the company's books. Journal entry is debit, cash, 10000 credit, common stock, 10000 Okay, remember, when you do journal entries, debit is listed first, and it's on the left side of the columns where the, the figures uh, reside. If it's a credit, it's indented, the name of the account, and then it's on the right side here, $10,000. Debits equal credits. Okay, we can also have the date um, would be an example of something that would be added here, and sometimes you put a explanation so you know what that is. Okay, we're just showing the account names and amounts here in our journal entries for this example. Okay, next one, purchased equipment for of $700 for cash. Okay, so that's going to be an entry to debit equipment. Equipment is an asset. We're increasing assets. We now own a piece of equipment worth $700. We purchased it for cash, so we spent cash. We're going to credit or decrease cash $700. Number three, we purchased supplies of $400 on account. Supplies is a asset account, so we're going to debit supplies to show that we increase our supplies $400. The credit is going to be to a liability account, in this case accounts payable, $400. When we purchase something on account, it's going to go, it means we're going to pay for it later. We haven't paid cash for it yet. So we show that in accounts payable that we owe a supplier uh, that much money. Okay, number four, we re performed services for a customer, received $3,000 cash. So Whenever we receive cash, we debit cash, increases our cash account. So we debit cash $3,000. The credit is to service revenue because we perform services for that customer. Okay. Number five, we paid salaries of $1,500 to workers. Okay, when we pay salaries, we're decreasing cash, we're sending cash out the door. And we're recognizing expense, usually, in this case we are, we're paying our salaries, so we debit salaries expense, $1,500, credit cash, $1,500. Number six, we pay $200 of amount owed in transaction three. We'll flip back here, transaction three, remember, we purchased supplies of $400 on account. So in transaction six, we're paying 200 of that. So we debit our accounts payable. We lower accounts payable with the debit, $200. We no longer owe that because we're paying it in cash now to our supplier. And we credit cash $200 to show that we paid cash for that. Number seven, we perform services for a customer. We received $500 and sent a bill for 2,500. Okay, so we have a couple things going on here. We received cash for $500. We performed services for a customer. The amount of services we performed it was worth $2,500. So we received 500 cash. We sent a bill for the remaining 2,500. Okay, so how we show that in a journal entry. Debit cash 500 because we received that. We sent a bill for 2000 so our customer owes us $2,000. We show that in accounts receivable with a debit of 2000 So we're increasing our accounts receivable, we're increasing our assets, $2,000. And then we record service revenue for the total $2,500. We show that with a credit. Credit increases revenue. Number eight, 
we paid rent expense of one thousand dollars okay we show that by recording rent expense increasing rent expense increase of an expenses with the debits so we debit rent expense one thousand dollars we paid for it so we paid cash so cash out the door decrease our cash account we show that with a credit credit cash one thousand dollars Number nine, we received $600 from transaction seven. Okay, transaction seven was where we performed services for a customer. Let's flip back here, it's this one here. We received, oops, we received $500. We had $2,000 that we billed them. Okay, transaction nine is saying that we're gonna receive $600 of that. Okay, so, we debit cash 600 because we receive cash and we decrease our accounts receivable $600 because our customers no longer owe us that amount okay decrease of accounts receivable decrease of an asset is done with a credit so we credit accounts receivable in the last transaction we pay dividends of $300 to our stockholders it's done by showing an increase in dividends, $300, and a decrease in cash since we paid it of $300 with a credit. So debit dividends, 300, credit cash, 300. So those are the journal entries. The next step is to post those journal entries into the accounts. Okay, and we're gonna do that by showing the T accounts. Um, We've also saw in the book and in the lecture that you could do it with a um, you know three column. I think they call it a three column uh, format. So there's different ways you can show that um, posting the the journal entries into account. Okay, so we need to go through each journal entry, determine what accounts were impacted. We know that from the descriptions in the account. Uh, so we just take those and transfer them into the ledger, post them into the ledger. That's called. I'm not going to go back and forth between, um, but you can do that uh, looking at the PowerPoint on your own and that type of thing. You can see which, um, uh, what the journal entries look like and that type of thing. Okay, first entry we invested uh, $10,000 cash in exchange for common stock. We debited cash, credited common stock. When we post that in the ledger, that's what it looks like. So $10,000 debit on the left side. $10,000 credit to common stock on the right side. Okay, how I'm going through this, I'm gonna put a number for which transaction it comes from so you can match up the transactions and follow along that way as we start to fill this out and get more uh, figures on there. So that's just a way that I use sometimes to, to track which amounts came from which entries. Number two was we purchased equipment for 700 cash. We debited equipment credit cash put it into the ledger this way equipment debit on the left side credit cash on the right side purchase supplies a 400 on account okay we debited supplies 400 credited accounts payable 400 we post that into the ledger the fourth entry perform services for a customer and receive three thousand dollars cash so we debited cash, credited service revenue, debit cash, credit service revenue. Okay, and that's number four. Number five, we paid salaries of $1,500 to workers. We debited salaries expense, credited cash. We post that into the ledger. Number six was pay $200 of amount owed in transaction three. So that's the accounts payable entry. We debited accounts payable 200, credited cash 200. Number seven, perform services for a customer received $500 and sent a bill for $2,000. We debited cash 500, credited accounts, or debited accounts receivable 200, sorry in credited service revenue, 2,500. So two debits, 500 to cash, 2,000 to accounts receivable, one credit of 2,500 to revenue. 
Number eight was we paid rent expense for $1,000. We debit expense, credit cash, $1,000. Okay, now, in this example, we've simplified the expense and we're showing expense in one account. In reality, you would have separate accounts for salaries expense. You would have a separate account for rent expense. So we could have shown those multiple accounts as well. We just simplified the posting in this example to put all the expenses in one account. Okay. Number nine, we received $600 from transaction seven. Transaction seven is where we perform services, receive some cash and build the customer. So we're receiving some of that cash now, $600 worth. We debited cash, 600 credited accounts receivable, 600. That's what that looks like when we post it. And then the last one, we paid dividends of $300 uh, to our stockholders. So we debited dividends, 300, credited cash, 300. Okay, now that we have all of journal entries posted, we can find the balances in account in the accounts. Okay, we do that by adding up the debits and credits, seeing which one is larger, and that's the balance in that account is on that side. Okay, we also know what the normal balance should be, so we would expect that balance to be there. So starting with cash, cash is an asset, asset has a normal balance of debit, we would expect um, the, the balance to be a debit here. So we add up all the debits, there's four of them there, and we're going to subtract the total of the credits from there, and we get a balance of $10,400 in the cash account. Okay, so we show that in the T accounts by drawing a line indicating a balance or a total, and we just show the total of the account on the right side of the T account or the correct side, not the right side necessarily. So we show it on the left side here, 10,400. We don't have to show total debits and total credits. Okay, but it might be something that you note um, on scratch paper or something to get there. So that's 10,400. Okay, uh, moving over to accounts receivable. We have one debit of 2,000. We have one credit of 600. So we have a total balance of debits of 1,400. We know accounts receivable is an asset. It's got a normal debit balance, so that makes sense. And we have a uh, debit balance of 1,400. Okay, <clears throat> supplies, it's only got one, it's a debit, so it's a debit balance, equipment, same, one account, or one entry uh, into there, it's a debit balance of 700. Accounts payable, we have a credit of 400, we have a debit of 200, it means we have a balance of $200 in, it's a credit balance, accounts payable is a liability, that makes sense because liabilities have a normal credit balance. So it makes sense that there would be more credits than debits. And we have a $200 uh, credit balance in that account. Revenue, two accounts or two transactions into that account. Just add them up, 5,500 credit balance. Expenses, again, we simplified it and just have it in one. So we have two expense um, entries, both debits. We just add those together, debit balance 2,500. Dividends, common stock, we just have one entry in each of those. So $300 debit balance and dividends, $10,000 credit balance in common stock. After we have all the journal entries posted to the ledger, we then can create the trial balance. Okay, so trial balance, remember, shows all of the accounts, what their balances are, and proves that debits equal credits. Okay, we start with the trial balance, we'll start with the title. So what do we do with title and financial statements? First, we have the company name, so Hawk Corporation. Next, we have the title of the account or the statement. This is trial balance. And then we have a date. Okay, so the date can either be for a period ended a certain date um, or 
it could be as of a certain date and we just put the date. Like the balance sheet, the trial balance is as of a point in time. So we just show that the date, January 31st, 2020. Okay, so this was for one month. First month they started um, uh, activities in the company. So it's the end of the month, January 31st, 2020. And we do the um, date on the trial balance title there. Okay, next we list all of the accounts with their balances, which we can get from the ledger. So we totaled and balanced and put the balance in all those accounts. So from the previous slide, okay, we start with cash that had a balance of $10,400. That balance was a debit balance. So we show it in the debit column. Okay. Next was accounts receivable, debit balance of 1,400. Supplies was the next account, debit balance of 400. Then we had equipment, debit balance of 700. Next was accounts receivable. It had a balance of $200. It was a credit balance. So we show that in the credit column over here. Next was revenue, credit balance of 5,500. We then had our expenses, 2,500 debit. So we show it in the debit column. Again, we simplified it here and combined all the expenses into one account. We could have and probably should have shown the rent expense separate from salaries and wages expense. And then those would have shown up as separate account items in the trial balance as well. Okay, next was dividends, debit balance of 300. And finally, common stock credit balance of 10,000. Okay, now that we have all the accounts from the ledger, from the postings into the trial balance, we can total the debits, total the credits. So we're gonna get the totals. We add up all the debits, 15,700. Okay, and then we add up all of the credits, 15,700, debits equal credits. Okay, again, that's all a trial balance does. It proves that debits equal credits and shows the balance in each account. Okay, it does not mean that we did all of the entries correctly. It just means that when we did the entries and then transferred them to the ledger, by posting it and then transferring to the trial balance that are debit secret credits. If we should have used different accounts, we won't catch that when we do the trial balance. If we had the wrong amounts, but the, the amount was wrong both in the debits and credits, we won't see that because debits still equal credits. Um, and that's not what the trial balance is meant to do. It's just meant to show what the balances in the ledger accounts are and that debits equal credits. That's it for chapter two. So if you have questions, please let me know. Again, go through these examples as you work through your homework. Remember, after chapter two, we also have uh, the exam uh, for, through for chapter one and two, small exam, 50 points only, uh, and it's the first exam. So there's um, materials out there on Blackboard that you can use to prepare for the exam and good luck.